Hey everybody, welcome to Challenge Athletes Live. My name is Bob Babbitt and we are joined today by Paul Bikus, who's producing an amazing film called Adapted along with the stars of the film, Anna Sowens, Daniel Watson, and Josh Hancock. How's everybody doing? Fantastic, <laughs> thanks Bob. Very cool, Good. and thanks Bob. Paul, let's start with you. The vision behind this, uh, did a lot of this come from from what you dealt with, with, with your mom? Yeah. I mean, I think my mom introduced me to the adaptive sports world and getting out and taking her skiing, um, showed me how important that is, uh, for all people to just get out and push themselves and take in the healing qualities of nature. And then I got to introduce to these guys through a long distance hiker and it just kind of rolled from there. Well, talk a little bit about your, your mom. You were, what, 14 years old when your mom was diagnosed? Yeah, so I was just getting into high school uh, when she was diagnosed with this disease. It's pretty rare. It's called posterior cortical atrophy, um, and it's a degenerative cognitive illness um, that just kind of slowly took away her abilities. Um, even though she could walk and talk, um, her brain just couldn't put together the the functions to do everyday tasks, even from, uh, you know, pouring a glass of water. Sure. And, and talk a little bit about what you found was mom being outside seemed to bring her to life, right? There was something about nature that allowed her to be her. Yeah. So just, you know, we have this wonderful cottonwood grove behind our house and a uh, stream running through it. And so, uh, when I moved home to help take care of her after college, you know, we just started going on walks every day. Um, we'd go up to the mountains behind our house also, and I just kind of saw this spark in her start to start to tick again. And, you know, the smile came back. I love that. And let's meet your the stars of your film. So uh, Danielle Watson from Long Island, New York. And Danielle, talk a little bit about when you were injured and how quickly sport became came back into your life? Uh, well, I was injured rock climbing in 2011 and pretty much immediately in the hospital, I was Googling, you know, adaptive sports. Yeah. Um, also, my surgeon was very encouraging. He told me immediately that I would ski again. So it was just a matter of how. And luckily in San Diego, I had a CAF um, mentor come visit me in the hospital. Um, Erica Davis, who, who's a oh, Paralympian yeah. and, or she does triathlon, triathlon, paratriathlon. So, um, that was really inspiring and helped me help introduce me to CAF. Well, and actually Erica, I think was the first paraplegic to climb Kilimanjaro. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing athlete. So it, after, after your crash, what did you feel you could do as an athlete? Did you? have a sense of what sports might be best for you? No, it's been a lot of trial and error at trial and error, you know, I'll try anything one time. So I've, I've tried, you know, wheelchair basketball and uh, skiing. I love skiing, but yeah, mo most of the sports that I love um, are, have something to do with the outdoors, you know, right. it's like also it's being outside, it's getting out in your environment and breathing the fresh air that I really love. And hand cycling, when did you realize, okay, I'm, I'm pretty good at this? Um, that was a great moment because I got introduced to Carlos Moleda at one of the CAF's camps. And I just realized that with hand cycling, um, it, was, it was an even playing field for me. I wasn't, um, you know, I'm not kind of a high thoracic injury. So paracycling is just a really good sport for me because it's all in the arms. So in the goal now, Paralympics? There's a glimmer of hope there. I'm just training. I'm just nose to the grindstone training and um, trying to see how far I can push my body towards that goal. But I, my goal right now would be to do an international race. So I, I would love to be able to travel. And that's what's keeping my, you know, hope and my motivation going through the pandemic and stuff. So let's move on to Anna. Anna, talk a little bit about uh, you just, I think you just climbed Mount Hood uh, and you broke your back in 2015. How, how did that happen? 
Paul's the rock climbing between the three of us. We're all climbing. <laughs> I see a pattern here. What the hell? Climbing PSA. Check your knots. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, yeah, it, it was an error where I thought I was roped in and I wasn't, and I free fell about thirty feet. Um, uh. And yeah, I climbed Hood in two thousand eighteen, and then Mount Baker this last spring in two thousand nineteen. Yeah. And Mount Baker was filmed for Adapted. Correct. Yeah, very cool. And, and Paul, yeah. Paul joined. And Paul, talk a little bit about, about filming. Uh, talk a little bit about filming Anna for that for that segment of the film, and how challenging that whole issue, how that whole thing was. Well, Anna sprung a fast one on us, and it, it the whole trip came together in about two weeks. So we had to try to plan. Uh, <laughs> logistics for 13 people coming together to get up this strata volcano and carry her sit ski as well as all the camera rentals for being on a mountain for three days just keeping batteries charged and carrying all the equipment ice axes crampons tents food it was a lot of work it was exhausting um but the team really came together and just pushed and had such a good attitude um it was amazing really Paul, talk a little bit about how you chose these three athletes and their three journeys to compile Adapted. Yeah, so, um, you know, it really started through this long distance hiker who uh, introduced me to them, but their stories just stood out to me as, as profound. Um, I mean, Anna really pushing the limits of what's possible and paramountaineering. I feel like she's kind of pioneering the sport. Um, and, you know, with new technology and working with engineers and, uh, you know, doing all of that. So that story really felt strong. And, and jo uh, Danielle's accident was just insane to me that, you know, she even survived. I felt like it was such an impressive story of survival and overcoming. And, you know, her attitude and spirit just spoke volumes to me. And Josh's story of survival and his heart and you know, the outdoors and how important the outdoors are to all these people um, just really connected with me. And I felt like they were stories that needed to be told. I, I love the philosophy and obviously it fits in right what we do with CAF, right? You focus on what you can do, not what you can't do. And I don't think anybody sums that up more than uh, more than Josh Hancock. Uh, Josh, talk a little bit about your you were ice climbing when uh, when you were injured. Yes, I was. I was, uh, I was ice climbing and uh, it was in December. We were in the Alpine up near Snoqualmie Pass in Washington. And um, I fell at about three in the afternoon, broke my back and got knocked out and a bunch of ribs. And I was just with my climbing partner. So um, he had to leave to get cell service. And so I was laying on the ice in the dark for about seven or eight hours before search and rescue found me. Wow. And at that point, you're living in Seattle, you're living in a, yeah. you know, what, a three level or something. Uh, yeah, something, exactly. something that was totally going to be inaccessible. Yeah, as soon as you got back to it. Accessible building you could imagine. There were stairs to get to the front door and then the whole house was stairs. And um, I think it was probably about 10 days that I was in the hospital before a friend asked me like, hey, Josh, like when you get out of here, like, have you thought about where you're going to live? And I was like, oh, no, <laughs> I haven't thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. I need to, I can't, I'm not going home, am I? And um, yeah, so the search for a new apartment began. Was there a point, was there a down point for you where you, you weren't quite sure what your life was going to be? Because when I read and you're, you go off on a 30,000 mile, like a trip, trip around the country and you to sort of move on. Talk a little bit about that transition from hospital to, okay, I can't live here anymore, to I need to discover what my new normal is going to be. Yeah, it was definitely a process. Um, you know, I, I think the first moment where I started to appreciate what I might be able to do um, as a paraplegic was in the hospital. Someone showed me a movie of Josh Duick, who's a phenomenal mono skier, and he's just going down these like giant pillow lines in British Columbia. And he was skiing better than I ever skied as an able bodied person. And I was like, wow, okay, that's really exciting. That's not compromise like he's doing it exactly the way I've always wanted to do it and that was really inspirational for me um, but 
it was months before I was not, before I had enough confidence in my body and wasn't experiencing enough pain that I could actually start being physical again. And it was in July, about seven months after my injury, that I received a grant from Harborview Hospital to go to the No Barriers Summit, yeah. which is a really amazing organization and event. And it was in Park City that year. And I got to interact with many adaptive sports organizations and see lots of possibilities about how you can mountain bike and how you can whitewater raft and how you can kayak and how you can do lots of things. Um, and that trip, I actually was living in my minivan for about six weeks. Yeah. And it was on that trip that I think I started getting the idea of like, maybe I just need to leave Seattle and start exploring and finding out what I can do with this body. And you end up moving to Bend, which is a great place to be. And now is it, yeah. are you, uh, you're going to be doing, is it the Salmon River? You'll be, yes. uh, that, yeah, when is that over? And that's CAF Idaho, I think is helping to fund that. Yes, that we just found out about that this week, which is phenomenal. We're, we're so thrilled to have that support. And uh, CAF Idaho is sponsoring us to help underwrite the trip. Um, it's going to be launching August 22nd on the Salmon. And that'll be, Paul, you'll be filming that as well. How much, how's your planning going on that? It's good. It's good. It's a lot coming together right now. Um, we're still, you know, raising all the funds for filming it. And um, yeah, this grant from CAF Idaho to help with the trip is huge. Um, but uh, there's a lot of logistics. Rafting is a completely different animal from uh, hand cycling or even mountain climbing up a strata volcano. Rafting is a whole new beast. Talk a little bit about that. What are the challenges? I mean, and when you're filming, how many cameras, was it like 13, 14 cameras? You've got drones, you've got to get permits. I mean, you need a Sherpa to figure all this stuff out. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. I mean, not 13, 14 cameras, usually two or three. We like to keep our team small, so it's uh, intimate with the story. Yeah. But um, you know, I mean, rafting, you're moving down a river, so you got to try to coordinate, you know, getting ahead with a certain crew to set up, you know, having people wait so you can film different rapids. Um, you got to worry about having waterproof gear for all of your equipment in case you have a flip. Um, you have to look at the rules for flying drones. I think most of the trip is going to be in a wilderness area, so we're not sure if we're going to be able to fly drones or not. Um, so we have to look into that. Um, and then as well as charging and dumping footage while we're on the river. Um, if we're in a wilderness area, we can't bring a generator. So we got to rely on solar panels to keep all of our equipment uh, charged and be able to dump it onto laptops so we can film more. So your mom lived 16 years after her diagnosis and recently passed. How, how important is this film in terms of your mom's memory? It's, it's really important. Um, you know, she just, I think just like inspired me to, well, my mom was a journalist uh, for many years before her diagnosis. Um, and she was a great writer and a storyteller. And, you know, I just want to show other people because of her, you know, how nature can help heal. Um, and how it can change people's lives. Like, you know, these three who are still getting out there and experiencing that healing that, that it provides. Hey, so Anna, talk a little bit about the, the journey you just did. Uh, having the crew, it's one thing to do, to do an adventure, but now you're dealing with camera crews, you're dealing with all sorts of other, other things around you. How hard was that? Yeah, I mean, I, I had film crews on both Hood and Baker, <laughs> and uh, I think they both made comments about how I wasn't, like, suffering enough visibly. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> got to give us some pain. Like, Anna, this is hard. What you're doing is hard. And she's just like, no, I'm just crushing it. <laughs> I giggle a lot. I tend to giggle a lot under pressure, under stress. And I don't think that necessarily translates well to a, uh, <laughs> a <laughs> film to about struggle. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, Paul was great to work with. And he's got this biggest heart of gold and his passion for the project shines through. So it was fun having him on the mountain and part of the project. And it wasn't like having a camera crew just like lingering. He, he was part of the team. So. 
So Danielle, you're, you've been part of the CAF family for a while. Talk a little about what CAF has brought to you. Wow, I mean, so much, so much. Um, I started out just getting grants to do competitions like a marathon a or a half marathon, but I would be like the only person, uh, the only adaptive person doing the race. But um, CAF has really helped me recently um, to know like, how to go to competitions where other hand cyclists are competing and how to train just i mean i never really trained i just went biking so right um now i'm on the women's hand cycling team and yep. um i have coaches and support to go to races when when there are races and um cf is a huge huge part of my life so Josh, when I when I read your story and you're out you're out ice climbing and you're with your buddy, and he's he's basically your safety net. And when things go wrong and you end up you know, becoming paralyzed, how hard has it been to welcome him back in your life and to be able to say, hey, stuff happens, and I can we both need to move on. Yeah, I I. I wouldn't say it was it was really hard to do, but it was really important to do, and it's it's a choice that you make. Right. Um, I think that uh, I I remember the moment when when we did it, and we were I I was having some drinks with him, and I just kind of had this like vision, and I, I looked at him and I said, Kel, you know, this event is going to connect us for our lives, no matter what, and it's either going to be like we're both holding on to a knife blade together and when I move it's going to cut you and when you move it's going to cut me or we're going to hold each other's hands and that's the way it is um and I'd really rather hold your hand through this than get cut um and that conversation began the journey of us remaining friends and I think another important part of it was realizing that I have done lots of things that could have resulted in other people, you know, being hurt or killed, you know, just looking at my phone when I'm driving or, you know, we all do things that don't result in really bad consequences all the time. And then sometimes you do things and bad things happen. Um, and I found a lot of humanity in thinking about it that way. Uh, and Josh, one of the quotes I read, it says, our joke in the adaptive community is that we call inspiration the I word. Yeah. <laughs> Explain that. I know from obviously all of our years with Challenge Athletes Foundation, I've had guys say, I don't like to be called an inspiration because I'm pushing a grocery cart through the, <laughs> through, <laughs> through the grocery store. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. I think, I think for me, it's just that I, you know, I'm doing these things because I love to do them because yeah. they feed my soul and because I love being challenged. Um, the fact that other people find it inspirational, I think is great. Honestly, I think it's wonderful. I'm glad that my stoke feeds other people's stoke. Um, but it's, I think it's what we're trying to do is to say that that's not why we're doing it. We're not here seeking attention. We're not here in order to make other people feel good. We're doing this because it feels good for us. And if other people love that, you know, that's great. Yeah, one of the other quotes, climbing prepared me well for life with a spinal cord injury, right? When you're climbing, you've got to deal with every little detail. And when you're in a chair, I mean, everything is an obstacle, right? And you're, everything you look at from stairs to cracks yeah. in, a, in, a, in the ground to every, everything. Yeah, I think where I first started thinking about it that way was like getting into a car. It was like, like getting into a pickup truck. It's kind of like a boulder problem. You know, you have to like arrange your feet here. You have to put your hand here. You have to like reach up here and it's balance and it's strength. Like it's climbing, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and there's also the logistics piece. You're right. I mean, you have to think three or four steps ahead. You have to put your coffee here so that when you get out of the car, you can reach it. And you always have to think a couple steps ahead or you spend your whole life going in little circles. Um, so it's kind of like the logistics and then also the physical piece. So what's Josh out of this? What is your hope for the film? Oh man. Um, I hope that, I hope that people connect with these stories and that they come away appreciating um, how much we love what we do in the outdoors and how hard we're willing to work to continue to be able to do that. 
and that people connect with that in their lives and that it, it helps them push just as hard to do things that they love. Danielle, for you, what's your hope for the film? Uh, well, when I was injured and like I said, I was Googling wheelchair sports, um, there, there wasn't a lot of information out there and I had to search really hard. And I, I'm just really excited about how um, adaptive sports is expanding uh, all the time. And my hope would just be that somebody who's newly injured would see this film and know that their life is not over and there's so much possibility um, and there's ways to get outdoors still. Anna, for you? Uh, I mean, I, I think it, it just raises the standard and the bar for what's expected of, of any of us, uh, whether you have a disability or not. Um, like my, my climbs have made headlines. They've caused a lot of conversations to start um, about what's possible. And quite frankly, it should be the norm. Um, and so I'm hoping that one day other folks doing things like this is not exceptional. It's just expected. Love it. And Paul, uh, for someone who's going to be working on this nonstop for the next number of months, what are, what are your hopes for the film? Yeah, I just, I hope this film will find people and these stories will, you know, inspire them about what's possible and, you know, show them how important getting outdoors is. And, you know, I think Josh said it, I couldn't say it any better than that, you know, just that to keep getting out there and how much these people love it and how much, how much they're willing to fight for it, I think is, is huge. Um, and so I think it can help a lot of people. Paul, where can people go to help out if they want to donate to make sure this film is as good as it could possibly be? Yeah, so um, yeah, they can go to our website, adaptedthefilm.com. Um, there's a link there to donate, and there's all of our trailers, info about each of the characters, our mission, um, really a lot of great info there. They can also sign up for our email list to uh, receive updates about our progress. It's on that homepage of our website. Um, very cool. Yeah. Thank, thanks all of you guys for taking time. Paul, best of luck with the film. CAF Idaho is proud to be supporting what's going to be a pretty epic journey. And just meeting you guys in a, in a short Zoom call, I can tell the personalities that you're going to capture. I can tell why you chose these three amazing athletes, Paul. This is going to be very, very special. Thanks, thanks so much, everybody. Bob. Thanks, you guys, for taking time. Thank, Thank you, Bob. Bob. Appreciate it. Wonderful. As is Challenge Athletes Live, my name is Bob Babbitt. The film is called Adapted, and it'll be coming out hopefully around Christmas time. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Bob. Bye. Thanks. Thank you.